Cinnamon Cooney, and today I'm going to show you how to do a portrait from a photograph, but to paint it expressively, which is a really important art skill. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. And I am pumped to show this to you. You can see I have a traceable here for those of you that don't draw. This is not a drawing practice today. So this isn't about how good your rendering skills are. This is actually about finding light and values and an expressionist emotional brushstroke. How to keep things loose when we want to get all rigid and representational and tight. Ooh. That's a big thing you'll hear artists talking about, like keeping it loose and don't get too tightened up. And that's like something we're going to talk about all day about tightening up in your body, tightening up in your mental space, and tightening up on your canvas. How do you take something that just begs for hyperrealism and then loosen it up? And on top of that, how do you translate this lesson to when you're painting people that you love and you have an emotional connection to, like we do coming up on Father's Day, mm -hmm. right? How do you paint somebody? And get that emotion in there as well as what you're seeing, finding that balance. Because that's really the artist's job is to find the balance of what we see and what we feel and somehow marry those things together and convey that to the world. And that's something you can do when you're new. If you're one of the many, many brand new people who have just joined the channel and this is your first live, hi! <laughs> This is the big art quest. We're working on portraits right now. But even if you're brand new, first brush stroke, first Q-tip dab in, just know that you can get something out of this. Because all your only goal, everybody, if you have been painting with me for a while or you're brand new here, your only goal today is to understand one thing at the end of this that you didn't know before. It is not to flip a switch and be the portrait painter. <laughs> oh, yeah? No, it's just to see more than you saw. As artists, every time we walk to the canvas, we try to see more than what we saw before. Mm -hmm. And I really want you to know that being a beginner or starting out or being in the learning stage, it is a special space. Yeah. Because you're in the headspace of being open-minded. Sometimes when you're a little further down the road, you forget to be open-minded. You forget those important skills. But at the beginning, you're just taking it all in. Mm -hmm. So just embrace that space and take it all in. Don't put expectations on yourself to be something at this benchmark. Just be like, you know what? I know one more thing about painting expressively than I did before. Understand something that I didn't understand because it will make you better as an artist. Yeah? Yeah. You're so funny today, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, like, it's like... You know, I'm a sippy sipping my coffee, sippy? so I continue to keep this energy up. Well, I, I really like, you know, hearing all this stuff because it's like, you know... I don't, I'm not an artist, and you know, but I even, like, you know, you did the, the painting you did the other day, when I was watching you record it, the one with the clouds, mm -hmm. was really inspiring to me. I was like, man, I could really do that. So, a lot of the times, I translate the stuff that you do into other thought processes that I have. So, you know, I don't know. Well, this isn't like a double round backflip backflip. See, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> that is not happening. Mm -hmm. But I probably could learn how to fly fish. Mm -hmm. I just may not cast a perfect reel. My first day out. I know a lot more about fly fishing for this Saturday's painting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you may get some fly fishing analogies <laughs> out of me because whenever I do a painting, I try to research it a little bit, kind of like an author, to get a sense of it. When I pick this, I want to just immediately say this is not my father. No. No. This was just a handsome guy, well lit. <laughs> And the reference po photo and the uh, traceable are on the artsherpa.com and also in the Facebook group, um, the Big Art Quest. Mm. So we have both of those. All right. I have my traceable here. And on the back, I've just taken Kit's chalk, I, I right? Have, I have to say it's nice that she called him handsome because he's sort of graying and I feel like I'm going going gray. So it's like there's a half a chance that I could stay there. <laughs> <laughs> You are there. You're so there. You don't even have to hit it. You have to worry. It's really cute. Okay. Well, that's that awkwardness aside. <laughs> I have rubbed chalk. This is just kids' chalk on the back of my rendering. I've used tracing paper to draw out my sketch. Just so you're managing your expectations, mm -hmm. I did about 20 gazillion sketches. John will verify. Mm hmm I had a real problem making the eyes too big on this one, and so it was just a journey. And I wanted to do certain things. I wanted to make sure that I put the focus of this piece on this hand. So I made this hand just a hair too big. What's that? I made this hand a little bit too big. Because it's, it's sort of in closer it, to you? It's Well, it, it is closer to me, but because I wanted this to be about this. I thought about if I was... If this was the person in my life, if I was painting the story, what was important about this whole thing and what came jumped out at me was the hand. 
Yeah. So artistically, I chose to put my focus on the hand. Whenever you alter the size of something, it changes its importance in the painting, in the composition. Mm. And even if you're brand new at painting and you're painting stick figures, even if you're doing Bean Man, remember the size of objects tell the viewer how important they are. So I made the hand a little bit bigger. I got this uh, trick from a friend of mine, John Douglas, who does portraits for yeah. bands and things. And uh, he did this with an Angelina Jolie portrait he did. So I was like, that's a really good idea. I'm also trying to place this where I want it. I want it up my canvas a little bit because I want the brush strokes to come off here a little expressively. But I still want to leave a little negative space around the head and, and, and face for interesting shape. And I'm going to tape my paper down so that it doesn't move on me because it will want to. It, it, it is very flappy paper. Flappy. And that isn't helpful for tracing. And now, I'm going to... Now, what is the tape you're using there? I am using low-tack tape. Low-tack tape. Low-tack tape for is artists. That, is this that is painter's tape. But really, you're just talking low-tack tape. You just want stuff that doesn't tear everything up when you tear it off. If I don't have low-tack tape, is there... You can take masking tape and tap it on your jeans. Yeah. Over and over again. And you, you ever done that? You go tap, 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 and then it's not as sticky. Low-tack tape. Mm. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm going to go over my drawing here with my pencil to transfer the chalk onto my black canvas. Now, I painted this 11 by 14 canvas board with black gesso. That's what I did. You can also just buy these black already at the store. Now, that was because the portrait was done with a black background. It was done with a black background. You want, yeah, you've got the portrait up yeah. there. It was done with a black background. It was. It had some very, very dramatic lighting, which I was really, really into because it lends itself to loose, expressive painting. Yeah. Because I can paint only the parts that feel important to me. And there, now that we've got this up here, you can see the hand reference size is a little different there. Yeah. And yeah, I think that is cool. Yeah, just a little bit. Just Not enough little to bit. be like, oh my gosh, it's an elephant hand. Yeah, and you know what? But I, enough to say, oh, this is more important in the space. Yeah, I wouldn't have noticed unless you had said something, to be honest. If, you're, if you are in the process of learning to draw, which I think is really awesome, I certainly am for learning to draw, remember on your eye line, on your oval, so if you've done your oval, to still do your bisect. So you still want to come down to almost that halfway point and make the line across. I like to curve it. And then you want to come over on the three-quarter and make the anchor line. That helps you find the features. And also put these in perspective. This eye should be bigger than this eye. And you still should have about an eye space between here. Hmm. Just a weird thing you might not know. The other thing when you're uh, painting a man and you're painting someone older, remember you're going to want to do certain things to show that. And having a more predominant forehead here and having more defined earlobes is important. Mm -hmm. Just weird things you do. And a bigger nose than you think. <laughs> it's a bigger nose than you think. Just weird observations. So, and much less lip than you think. <laughs> it's just so funny. When I was first doing this, I was like really, really exaggerating the wrong features. And I was really having to get down to what I felt was important in the piece for me to figure out where I wanted to put my focus. When I'm doing hair and a beard... I'm not going to worry about the individual hairs. I want to worry about the overall shape mm. first. And then I'll worry about how I'm going to get that hair in there and all that in here. The other thing you're going to want to do, make sure these lobes are, the ears are a little bit bigger and the lobes are well-defined. I bet you didn't know that either. I did not. Just weird things that you, Peyton, a lot of people will be like, hey, what's up with that? You know, I'm a, I'm less intimidated to try to draw a face now that I've watched as many BAQs as I have. Really? Yeah. It's like, I mean, at first it was, you know, like my, you've seen my faces. They're like, a, it's a round thing with a couple of dots and, a, you know, an yep. upside down you. But, but you symbolically have conveyed a face. So you've hit the first goal of I, artist, I right? Have, you've yes. conveyed your message. <laughs> But I, I, I would say that understanding like how some of these pieces go together, like when you talk about drawing the bisecting lines around the face and, you know, understanding some of those mechanics helps kind of know how to... How to do that. Yeah. Well, and there's nothing like drawing to learn how to draw. That's true. I probably would be a better drawer if I drew more. Oh, yeah. It just always helps. There's never an end to the growth. 
My hand's I... going to come off here. And then I've got this pipe. And I'm going to add smoke. That wasn't in the reference photo. But I was like, this dude definitely, definitely smokes his pipe. So why would I take that from him? I would make that part of that. If this is what's important, right? Mm -hmm. So if this was my father, then probably he would be smoking a pipe. And I'd really want to talk about that in my art when I was trying to talk about him. Mm -hmm. More than I want to talk about the shape of any object in particular on him, I want to talk about expression, hairline, and the things that are important to this person in my painting. We are world builders artists. Yes, we are. We are world building artists. Yes, we are. Okay, some vests and some things. These lines just remind me I had something coming on here, and I need to make sure I have enough information to do the painting in. I like to use chalk because it's easy to uh, get rid of, and I'm liking to use the um, black gesso because the grit, and it mixes well into everything, kind of fluids everything up. Does. And on top of that will help me erase things if I need to erase them very easily. So I'm happy with the placement. If I was really unhappy with my trace, you know what I could do? Uh, use a white, uh, wet cloth and wipe it off? Yeah, there might be so much chalk that I would even just reach so over it and be like, no, I start over. <laughs> the other thing is if you lost a line, don't worry about it. You can come back, right? Just you can free. come in and make sure that the lines are how you want them to be. You're so brave. You're just free drawing right on there. Well, I free, freed you it in the first place. <laughs> There's a better than half chance I'd get it done. But let me tell you, there were some crazy pictures in the beginning. Get some little eyebrow information here. Even though it's really unlikely that I'm going to have it by the time I'm painting everything in. Mm -hmm. But you can see I've got this guy here. And now he looks sort of like a figure. Right? And I love that we have the, uh, the hand well thought out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure this thumb is really... Special. Special thumb. I love this thumb. It's a weird thing. You will find yourself obsessing as you get more artistic. You will find yourself obsessing on the weirdest things. You'll be like, strange things are important to me. What an odd little being I am. <laughs> I'm an odd little being. I think it's good to be. I like being odd. That's the thing about art is you'll get to know yourself real well. <laughs> You may be like, I'm so strange, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just pulling all this in. And so in this, this is not about, again, you getting in the National Portrait Gallery and drawing or painting the best painting ever. This is about you understanding a little bit about how to find light and dark and create emotion. Next thing in this piece is that this is almost to me a contrast painting. These are complementary colors. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of violet and yellow. And so that really kind of changed up my color palette. Now, after this is over, definitely check the description below for information or the Art Sherpa page or the um, Big Art Quest group because I'll update those colors as I'm going through because I'm not 100% sure exactly since I haven't done a practice painting. You're painting with me raw from a photo because I'm going to talk about why I'm making decisions that I'm making. No. Tough for me to do it once I already make those decisions. Yeah, now Mary was asking about that. So she, she has a, qu a quick question here. I have now, so many answers. Now, That's why we're hand, here live today. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the hand. So you made it a little bit bigger. Is it like an inch bigger or is it like, I mean, like, what she's, she's having. Oh, I think of it in percentages bigger. Like it's like five, ten percent bigger. Very small. Huh? Yeah, but if I was, you know what I mean? This is something that, this, this is what you can have in common with the fine artists at the galleries, right? Mm -hmm. Or in the museums, is they'll do these things all the time. When you're looking at it, you'll be like, that foot is not the size I expect that foot to be. No. Because they're trying to say, like, maybe when they were looking at these, uh, at these people, that the feet were super important to them, and that's what they were thinking about was, was these bare feet on bare ground, and so then you'll find that the figures have big feet. But maybe not, like, hugely big, just bigger. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put out some color. While you're doing that, now, wouldn't this be a good place to use those tracing skills to, like, try out different sized hands? And, and I tried out different sized features, and yes, this is exactly when you work that out. I'm going to put out some burnt umber today. And it's a little old, but that's okay. <laughs> so tracing really is a tool like it's right here. It's an art tool. It is not a cheat. It is an art tool. And it's how you work out ideas without wasting camps. Yeah. 
I'm going to put out some burnt sienna next to this. And so you can kind of see the differences between the burnt umber and the burnt sienna. Yeah. Now, again, I really feel like there's a strong violet in the painting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just know that I grabbed... Oh, there it is. This is... I changed the blue to what I usually use to oppression. And I'll explain why you can use a thalo here if you want. I'll explain why I'm using everything. And, again, we have exchanges for some of the weirder colors for, for you guys that are like, I don't really feel like going out and buying any new art materials, which is so cool. You don't have to. This is a Lizarin Crimson. This is something, if you're mixing skin tones, you probably do want to have a tube of a Lizarin Crimson around. Most uh, formulas are going to have some of that in there. Mm -hmm. Now I have some uh, Quinacridone Magenta, which I, maybe I wanted the Violet. I think I wanted the Violet and I grabbed the Magenta. Uh-oh. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> Can't open that one? Hmm? Can't open it? No, it's just, it's, I, I don't really need it on top of the um, yeah. alizarin. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put some Prussian blue into the alizarin crimson to make my uh, violet. Ooh. So see, sometimes I don't have a paint color that I thought I was going to have, and then I don't have it. Um, if you have it, just put it out because it's a really nice skin coat color. <laughs> Quinacridone violet. I grabbed magenta. What was I doing? <laughs> I think maybe it's in my tube of Holbein. Got the white. I might sometimes use zinc white, but I'm doing dry brushing over everything. I'll put out a little cad yellow. Mm -hmm. Right here. Just in case I want to brighten up. And I think I'm going to use my black gesso for my black. <laughs> I feel so tricky. I'm not at the moment putting out glazing because, again, I'm not trying to paint a hyper-realistic Rembrandt-style portrait. I'm trying to paint in a more modern style, more expressively, more loosely. And so what I'm going to be looking for is values and f dry, expressive kind of brush strokes. Mm -hmm. So I keep I wonder if the violet's over there. Okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> Your, your 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 brain is going, where is that tube of paint, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Which tube of paint are you looking for? I'm looking for Quinacridone Violet. Actually, Quinacridone, any of my violets would be Quinacridone great. Quinacridone Violet. All right. So any um, violet I have would be good at this gonna, point. But I can make a vi I can make a violet with these two. You could make a violet, but you I'll know. Make a, I can make a violet. It's all right. It's just, oh, it's shit. Everyone's now, everyone's now emotionally committed to the violet tube. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. No, no, <laughs> it's okay. I didn't mean to kidnap you. <coughs> so... While John's doing this, I'll talk about skin colors. Skin colors, right? We've talked about this before. We've had a lot of quests. There's a bunch of videos on mixing skin colors. I've talked about my favorite book on 400 skin color recipes. And that there's more. Just any violet that you see. Anything that says violet, I'll go for. Yeah. not per What's that tube that's facing down that's Liquitex? No, 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 no. Right down there. To the, to the, it's upside down. <laughs> I got it. Quinacridone blue violets. <laughs> There's so many tools. He's just not going to find it. We're going to have an extra 20 minutes on the video of him digging through. I need. Mean, Y'all have the cutest studios where you tubes. hang your stuff up on the walls. Look at how sad my tube is. It's so sad. It's a sad tube. All right. No, this is. So you guys know, this is live. This is live. In case you were wondering, it is yeah, live. This is absolutely. It's so live. <laughs> So what I'm going to start doing is looking at my reference photo and looking for highlights. Okay. Oh, I was saying something about skin tones. What, okay. I am usually really on point. But this is kind of an involved thing we're doing today. So when you're mixing skin tones, especially for this, you want to look for those undertones. And then sometimes when you're painting expressively, you kind of want to fan it. You want to pull the fantasy colors out of that. So when I'm looking at this, what I'm seeing is a lot of yellow and a lot of purple. Mm -hmm. Which you know is my favorite. It's a complementary color painting. There it is. Right? So I'm actually pick, picking colors. They're muted. They're subdued. They're going to make skin tones, but they're going to be slightly to the yellow and they're going to be slightly to the purple. And that is going to play, in theory, for very dramatic painting. Mm -hmm. Why not? Could go bad. It's live. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned. I could suck today. So <laughs> I'm going to start putting in some of my highlights. And I'm going to start on my skin tone and take a little of my... Alizarin over to my yellow ochre. And you can see just right away it's it's becoming very, very skin-like. Now he is super ready, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get a little of this brown. So I don't want him to be... He's not bright. Let's get a little of the blue. 
A blue. Do, 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 graying it out, aren't we? There we go. There's an interesting skin tone. And I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to try and leave a lot of black. And I'm going to try to leave the wrinkles. Leave the wrinkles. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a negative space painting, which is I'm going to leave where I have deep shadows. I'm going to leave the canvas just showing through. Mm -hmm. In theory. If it goes wrong, guess what I'll do? Hmm. Paint it back. <laughs> try and brush it back. So try not to get too, too stressed about that. This is, you notice I haven't added any water to my brush. I'm going to come here and I'm going to follow this highlight, just this highlight. I'm going to mostly be working highlights and let the shadows tell the other half of the story. Mm -hmm. I've got another little interesting forehead wrinkle that I can enjoy there. Go more into my alizarin. I'm just pulling this in and I'm liking it. Why? I don't know. I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm a hopeful person. So I know under the eye right here, kind of coming over at an angle. Yeah. I've got a little highlight. Paint that in. And then I've got another little one under here. And I'm just dry brushing this on. And it's a little stronger right here at the cheek. And I'm just looking for these things. You guys just be looking for these things. A little alizarin. A little yellow ochre. Some burnt umber. And just a dab of blue. It's like cooking, isn't it? Mm. In some way. Now, right here, I'm going to put just a smidge of a highlight, which I'm probably going to come back much brighter. And down the front of my nose, to the tip of the nose, I'm going to add a little highlight too. So right now, what am I doing? I'm just painting in. Ooh, you keep, I keep thinking you're going to go for more paint, but you don't. You're just... No, paint. this is, this is a very, this is very light on the paint. This is, this is intense on the brain and light on the paint. I'm going to do a highlight right here along the eyelid. Mm -hmm. we and have then there's a little pocket highlight right there. I'm just using the corner of my brush to put that in. So you can kind of see now why I might have picked this picture. Yeah. If you're trying to paint something loosely and expressively, when you're really new at it, it can help to pick dynamically lit pictures that um, have very deep blacks and very bright highlights. So you can easily see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little more yellow ochre, a little more crimson. You know, while you're doing that, I'm going to just, I'm going to have you do a little celebratory dance while you're uh, I am? painting that in. Yeah, because we have been Sherpa for a while. No way, are we all into this? You we guys are. were like, I thought we were doing a Rembrandt. No, because <laughs> that'd be like 20 hours and we got to go to sleep. Yeah. But today, it's nice when we get to, whenever we get to 300, we like to celebrate that we are Sherpa. So if you guys are out there at home, do your little dance. Help remember that you're alive and we're celebrating today our painting stuff. So, you know, thank you guys for joining us on our community days. And uh, if you're at home, don't forget, if you can't get up and dance, to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Because it's, it's important for you to celebrate too. So thank you for joining us here today. I know it's been a really big crowd here. When we have 300 people in the room, it's been fantastic. So thank you guys so much. We're going to let us in keep painting. I know it's a lot to paint today. No, it's, not, it's, it's really not. It's going to be very relaxed. So really? I want us all to, if you're painting along with me, and you've jumped in and you're like, all right, I'm painting with you while Sherpa. I'm just going to trust you. Take a deep breath in. Yeah. Take a deep breath out. I do actually have a plan. This, this, <laughs> so this, it's okay. So this is not going to be as big a deal as, as I think then? Mm-mm. Uh -uh. So. No, in fact, and for some of you. Yeah. It's going to be like something will crack. Every time Every time we paint, there's a breakthrough moment where you suddenly get something that you didn't get before. Yep. Sometimes breakthrough, breakthroughs are massive and sometimes they're minor. They all are awesome though. Mm -hmm. Right? And again, if you've never painted a portrait before, right now, just be like, oh, I didn't know it had those layers. Just yeah. find something you didn't know the day before. That's all you've ever got to do.
Yeah. Just know something you didn't know before. Just know. Well, Just and know. I, I'm excited because, you know, I, I actually was a little intimidated when I saw you pull this painting out. <laughs> He's like, oh, we're going to be here all day. But I, I guess what it really is is that you do pick stuff that people can do. That is my goal is to try to pick things that you guys can do, if not today, then someday soon. Now, this highlight right here, I'm going to lighten, actually, with a little more ochre. Yeah. With a little more ochre. More ochre. Because it's a little brighter along this face. So, and I want to make sure that I have honored that bright area right there. I don't want to paint my lightest color yet, but I do want to want to put the inside corner in the eye here, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's got some very drop lidded eye, so you want to make sure that you're showing that somehow. His little furrowed brow. Little, mm. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's a thinker. Thinking. He's a thinker. And again, this is not about you painting. Well, have you got this yummy color? Yeah. You can come right here. On the forehead. A little more highlight over there. Yeah. I see one. And then I see another little one kind of right here that I'm going to brush to the side. Now, the Sherpettes were asking, on a scale, on our hoot scale of one to three, how difficult is this? Well, if you've been painting with me for a little while, it's a three hoot, but it's a three hoot you can do. Okay. Because if you've been painting with me, say, 20, 30, 40 paintings, you're yeah. kind of starting to see values a little yeah. bit easier. And this exercise is about seeing the value. Cool. And not having to paint everything to tell the story, but you're painting the most important things to tell the story. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be a real challenge for an artist. Yeah. So you want to say it's definitely in the three hoop, but there's nothing about it that's particularly like, wow, you needed to be doing this for 100,000 hours to get it. Yeah. All right. So I'm coming along here. I'm going to take maybe this brighter color while I've got it. And I'm going to sit there and say, I acknowledge that along the ridge of my nose, there's some of this. And there's some right here up the bridge, maybe even at the top of this highlight, and on this outer side here. There we go. Oh, and I'd like definitely want to put some of that. Sometimes I'll be have a color and I'll be like, oh, that's a good color. <laughs> I'm gonna put some alizarin back on my brush. And there's definitely a little bit of foot on the ear. Thank goodness we did some ears, right? So I'm going to come on the outside edge. Just paint a little right here along this outside edge. And then a little bit right here in the ear. And just one more. There we go. So we don't want to say that much here. Let's dry brush a little bit at the back of the neck. And then just under the ear jaw coming down. Now, dry brushing is where you just don't add any water. I haven't it. added any water. I'm using super light pressure. I'm going to put a highlight right here. There's one coming from the temple ear. Mm -hmm. All right, just softly, really softly here because this might be a darker value. And then down here. Isn't it amazing how his wow. face has just like happened? Just, just he has a face, a face, a face, an face like if this were your loved one this would be a face that you would know and you'll find by painting people more loosely in a more relaxed fashion that people will see them better because we identify people by the hairlines and the shadows right so this is a good way of seeing that in function let's get under the hand a bit this has definitely on the front end of the finger a bit of a Highlight coming over, doesn't it? Yeah. So I definitely want to make sure I have that there. A little bit there. A little bit there, you know. And then some in the hand. We'll start talking about some in the hand. Lightly over the knuckles, because these are in shadow. So we're just being super light about it. We talk about it too much. Where are we going to be? Then we got to get realistic. We have to tell the story differently. So we mm. want to make sure that we're very controlled about the story that we're thinking of telling. 
So I'm going to tell a highlight on the inside of the thumb here, and then another highlight across the finger here. Not that much down the hand. Loving it. Now I have a hand. You have a hand. <laughs> and it really is, it's just coming right in there. It just comes right in there. Now the hair, I want to do some interesting stuff with, which is a little bit the hair is why I got the Prussian blue out. We're going to be in the eyebrows and the hair. We're going to kind of do this flip where a lot of this is going to be very, very loose and expressive, and then the hair is going to be a little more detailed. So I'm going to take a little of my Prussian and a little of my burnt umber, and I'm going to add a smidge of uh, white to it. It's going to be really hard on John to show you what we're doing. It is? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a dark color. That's right. Oh, no, I got cameras adjusted ahead of time. Look at that. See? You can look in the in the monitor over there. Watch. Look at that. I'm going to just very, very dry brushy also here. Paint in a little of this color in the shape of the hairline. Yeah. See? It just is about... Being as chill as you can be. How chill can you be? Wow, that's cool. Now, see, here's something that's really interesting. It's like right now I have RoboCam, like, you know, he's Johnny oh Five. The beard. He's Johnny Five on the spot. He's real zoomed in, but so you can see all these brush strokes, but as it's as you zoom out, right. the it's when it really comes together. So I, I want everyone to be able to see because a lot of people are using small screens to be able to see what, what you're doing there. So I zoom in. But yeah, no, it's important for them to see, especially if they're painting off a mobile. And you guys should think about that because it's not really great for your eyes. <laughs> okay. And I'm just coming here. And you'll notice this, this is just very loose. I'm just like the corner of the brush. Look at this. Just a little bit of this. We'll have a lot more to say about all of this in a little bit. Yeah. But we just don't need to say it right now. I'm going to put a little more brown into this Prussian blue mix. And I'm going to come here on what is my vest. And I'm going to just stroke this down a little bit. And then maybe... Get a little of the white and maybe a little of my ochre. Then come here and dry brush a highlight. Mm. Just a little bit on this vest. See oh. how I'm just very, I mean, look, I'm on a number six bright here. This is just a black pearl. So I'm going to zoom in. And what's really cool is that your dry brushing on the canvas makes the fabric tech, fabric look like fabric of his jacket yeah isn't it crazy and i'm you know I, so it was really interesting as you zoom out the image comes together i'm just paying attention to the puzzle pieces that the image is giving me and i'm saying as little as i can about it how are we doing Looking oh he's starting to come together yeah. his the light is starting to come on him he's glow which is important He's got his nice glow, you know, which I like. I'm going to get, um, I think actually I'm going to get into my um, quinacridone. So this is an interesting color. This is quinacridone nickel ozzle gold. Mm -hmm. Look, you can use Indian yellow. There's uh, there's a bunch of exchanges for this. This is, this is just a fantastic color because as you add white to it, you can see it gets quite light. And I think that's too bright for what I'm going to do next. But I think it's going to play against what I'm going to do next quite well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take my blue over to my violet. Oh, there it is. See these two against each other? Mm -hmm. and I'm going to get some white on here. If you need to, get some brown. 
to knock it back. You just want to know it's got that violet undertone that you need. And we're going to come tell a little story about his shoulder. Now, what, what, what are you painting on there? This is an 11 by 14 canvas board. This is pre-gessoed. I gessoed it with this uh, Liquitex black color gesso. A lot of companies make a color gesso. You can color your own gesso. I think it's tough to color black gesso. Yeah. I think what you basically get mostly is gray. I'm gonna color, I'm gonna take a little bit. Now, I'm also painting much further back on my brush. This allows back from my canvas and observe what I'm looking at and just be very light and free with my brush stroke. Oh. If you're painting at a table, though, don't feel like you can't do that. I'm gonna zoom out so we can see more of that technique there. Cause you don't, you generally are, are use the use the brush closer up. I do because I'm often working like details and elements of details. But in this particular case, I'm really not. And so you're I'm going to just put this back here. I'll come back and put my little stripe in. But do you see the slight purple cast? Yeah. I like it. And I can get a little blue in there and deepen it. And I can get a little brown to neutralize it. Because there's a little yellow in the brown. Right? Yeah. That's how I can neutralize them. Come under this right here. And then there could be a little bit right here. I'm not trying to tell everything about this space. Just some of the stuff. Oh, and so Lynn was asking what were you at, what you're using for a palette over there. I think that's that. This is Gray Matters acrylic paper palette. Right. By these are tearaway sheets that are for acrylic painting. I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a little purple here, and just a little bit coming down. See, mm -hmm. just less. Doing stuff, but less. I'm going to come back with that kind of azo and white. And maybe put some of this dry brushed highlight on it. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Isn't that lovely? It's, uh, it's just beautiful, and that's what's fun. I'm going to just stroke down. See? I definitely want to put some of this at the tip here. There's a little bit of light caught there. And so this is just about, can I find the light in what I'm painting? And there's, I, and when you work contrast like the violet against the Ozzo, you get a very sophisticated finish result. It is very interesting. Isn't it fun? I like that. I'm going to sip my coffee. I might even have you microwave it for me. Ooh. So, take a deep breath. Sometimes the job of taking information out, it, it's almost easier in some ways to do realism because it's about just really living in the piece and looking, 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 but not even really seeing in a weird way. Because mm -hmm. you're just taking it in and pulling it out and taking it in and pulling it out and making those decisions to say, what am I removing from the painting? Mm -hmm. Right? That, I look at John like, he's like, he's like, yes, he's my audience. Hey, look at that. What are I going to do for you? Hey, how are you? Oh, hi, Akil. I am fine. And Lady Tisha Angelis has got palettes and notes. So I guess she's taking art notes? Is that what's happening? <laughs> the brush was a bright. Yes, this brush I'm using, I haven't even switched out of is a number six bright. I could also live in a number 10 bright. I'm pretty much living a bright all the time. A namaste right back, Nita. Namaste. Uh, uh, where can we buy art Sherpa brushes? Um, we have an ever expanding list of where they're at and there's an art Sherpa brush page on the website and I imagine one of the moderators has a link for that. They are out now and they're starting to be there so that's kind of an exciting time. All right, Gail says hi. Hi, Gail. <laughs> oh, and as Swiss Mrs. Abby, you can go to the brush guys as well. Yes, remove stuff, not more or less, says Longwell Art. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay to take things out. I mean, it's okay to put them in. 
really they're both okay decisions. It's just about knowing that you have those choices. Um, one of the things that's like hard to remember on a canvas is that all the possibilities belong to us, don't they? It's an endless, infinite number of worlds that we can paint on a white canvas. Oh, I had a much love from the UK, but I didn't see who it was, but oh. much love back. No, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. He came back and took away my comments because I read them. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to me. I read them. So, you know, just like this is what we're talking about today, but don't, don't run away with this and go, this is the right way to art. This is just a fun way of arting and it has value for you in your journey. And it's something you should dip your toe in. I dipped my toe in a bunch of stuff that was really challenging for me, like casting bronze. I love that though. Yeah, John loved it. I, you know, one cistern of molten lava hitting the ground and I was done. Well, I was, I was um, able to, it. excuse me. That stuff moves fast on cement. It boils. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to put in a little bit about the necktie, I think, right here, which I'm going to actually probably do just the Prussian. But I don't, I'm, I'm going to lighten it with just a bit of white, but I don't want it to be too much. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about what's here. There we go. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say about that. Isn't that delightful? Mm. All right. So I've got this really cool violet. I'm going to take it and mix it with my um, burnt sienna. And I'm going to get some white in here. Now, uh, there was a couple questions. If you don't if you if you're not sure if you have a bright or you're you, or you're not sure if if, if, crimson. if there are brights in your part of the world, what is it they need to be looking for? Okay, so a bright. Okay, so there's two types of squared brushes basically. Yeah. You know, you can get in more complicated like watches and things like that. But basically, in acrylic, so you've got the ferrule here. Mm -hmm. This is the filament or bristle. These are filaments because they're made by man. They're not. They don't come from an animal. The length out determines the brush. If it's a long length out, it's a flat, and those tend to widen out in the stroke and give you less control. If it's a short length out, it's a bright. Often you'll see the make of the, the brush will be right here. So it'll gotcha. say bright. I'm going to look for some places to put this bit of purple huh. that I have mixed. Yeah, thanks. There were some folks that were like, I don't know if we have brights in our part of the world because there were some folks from the Philippines and Germany and they were all like, huh. And so Just taking an outer highlight. Yeah, you know, what I'll tell you is is that it's like the Q-tip paintings. When you're really, really painting, you can paint with anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just describing what's going on with me so that you guys know how I'm getting my result. But that doesn't mean there's not another way of getting it. But in general, that's what it is. There's probably, if there's brushes, you probably have brights and flats. What you may be struggling with is good brushes for acrylic. Right. Because it, it seems like everybody stocks. I'm going to come under the eye a little more with this purple. Now, you're not really using the actual colors from the image. You're using some emotional colors here. Yes. I looked for what was the story under the lighting. The story under the lighting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's like the title of a book. The story under the lighting. Well, <laughs> that's a Sherpaism. <laughs> there was a story under the lighting, and it spoke to me. Now, now I, I have some Elizabeth groups in it. So. The sarcasm under the mocking has been talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna put a little red at that ear. Come back into my little purple tones the back of the neck. Yeah, I think it's easy to get caught up in color expresses feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's important to look for the feeling in something. This li this this photographer really made a lot of decisions in the piece and expressed it with the lighting. Now, which I'm going to get this lighter actually. I'm which violet? Even lighter. Which violet is that? Sorry. This this particular one is quinacridone violet. Okay. They just were just curious which one you were using. There's a lot of violets that you can use in portraiture. Basically, you're just looking for a violet. And if you really had to, you could work it with your dogs in purple. And I would. I, I, you could do this with just any three colors. Mm. Right? So 
I'm always going to tell you, hey, this is what I'm using to get these results, to get this effect, yeah, this sort of thought. But, you know, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't. Look how bright it's ties. It doesn't <laughs> mean that you shouldn't, you know, use what you have. You can always use what you have. Yeah. You know, don't don't let that ever slow you down. Sometimes when you're in a you're in a class or a lecture, they will say you have to have our colors. Um, but this is not that. This is not that. So don't worry about it. I'm going to come here just under the nose a little bit with this color on the outside, on the tip of my brush. Oh. I feel like I'm going to put some here. Just, I'm going to think on my hand a little bit too. Well, maybe there's a little highlight right here I want to talk about. A little bit off this hand to be sort of loose and rough. There we go. Get a little of this more and just go right into the nail right here. Just enjoying that. Maybe right here. In the center of the hand, I'm going to pick up on this highlight. And so I'm just looking for part of the story. What can I pick up on and still be telling my story? And what can I leave behind? Right? And I'm going to switch down to a smaller brush. Um, painting loosely, one of the advices that you'll get is use the biggest brush that you have control over. So, um, you know, one thing we can do sometimes is these classes where you pick a really big brush and you just work it out with this one big brush. And sometimes you'll find yourself like flipping around to get control of the tool or just working the corner. And so that's something that you can do when you're trying to figure out how to paint uh, loosely. And I'm going to work on some more highlights I think so that I need. You, you need more highlights? I do. I'm going to come into my nickel oil and mix it into my yellow ochre. And I'm going to add some white to this. And you can see this gives me some yellow. Mm -hmm. So right now, again, I'm working contrast, aren't I? Because, you know, purple and yellow are on opposite ends of the color wheel. So anytime I play <laughs> with that. You assumed I knew that it was working in contrast. I was going to say, uh, maybe? <laughs> maybe you so, are. So these, these yellow and, and purple. And purple are contrasting colors. So I'm going to just very lightly put a little of that right there. Definitely come right here. These are the these are the brightest of the highlights that are happening. Now you the traceable for this is available on the on Our the website. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a really nice little bit right here. Here. Isn't that great how that mm, pulls in? I just love very it. Very interesting. Just playing with the color. Not to take it too seriously, <laughs> and that's and that's hard. Not taking yourself. I'm gonna get in a smaller brush here, if I can. Probably shouldn't, but I'm gonna. Always work to your comfort. Um, take advice from artists as you go, experienced artists, because you know, we've survived some stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> we've survived the paint tube exploding everywhere. We might have a way to get out of your carpet, and we've probably been in your shoes we probably had your panic attack mm -hmm. that you're currently in right now mm -hmm. about oh am i talented can i go on we've been there we artists that have really worked and have experience we've been in your shoes yeah so sometimes we're a great resource to be like hey i've been there here's my strategy for handling that but remember sometimes we have weird quirky opinions because we're artists and that intrinsically makes us a little bit crazy <laughs> so you know truth <laughs> truth <laughs> john's been here a while he can testify <laughs> testify mr john but so, it's you know it's like take it in but also take it with a grain of salt you know you didn't buy a box of crayons of all one color you know i didn't no we, we're all come we all come different <laughs> and we kind of it's kind of good because if we were all the same it'd be you could you could just yeah. color one color. I wouldn't want to be one color. No. That would be terrible. 
You're a box of contrasting crowns. You're a box of crowns. <laughs> do you feel special? I do. I'd, I'd be, I, you know those glitter crowns? I I'm think just those are pretty interesting. Trying to talk about the shape of the Sorry. thumb because the thumb, this was important to me, so I definitely want to get back in here and discuss it further with my yellow. The Anne's very excited about doing this. Oh, she's this like, is really fun. She's like, this is way outside my comfort zone. I think this is exciting and cool. I want to try it. Oh, see, and I love that. That's what I love to hear. It's outside my comfort zone, but I want to give it a try. Yeah. Just makes me so happy to hear. I'm put a little bit right here. And I think if I say any more on that, I'm going to end up being sorry. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna regret saying more. <laughs> I'm gonna regret it. I think the yeah. one little thing that I can say is I'm gonna come in and make. I've got my yellow on my brush. I haven't even rinsed it. You'll find artists that work a lot. We tend not to rinse our stuff out. Now you're concerned about overworking it, right? Yeah. This is what I'm trying not to do is is say any more than I have to, to get my point across. So that's what I'm trying to to resist. And you'll hear, as an artist, sometimes people talking about overworking an area mm -hmm. or underworking an area. And I think that's what, what she's, she's looking to dial that in. I'm right? looking to dial it in. I'm going to get my tiny filbert. This is my number two filbert. And I'm going to take my alizarin crimson over to my burnt sienna and maybe add a little... Let's get some... Not burnt sienna, burnt umber, burnt sienna. I have a little violet. Little, I'm trying to make just sort of this deep color because I've got to create, there's an undercast shadow to a nose, but it has to be so light if it's going to work. Now I'll just take a little, go back over my quinacridone. Just a little bit under here I'm going to, cast a little light there and maybe maybe just the, the softest run of it along the top of that you just want to be so so say as little as you can as little as you can now I'm gonna do something about these lips which is mostly gonna be my um, alizarin and maybe my oak my hair this here and I could put some burnt sienna in it but I don't want to say too much so I've got this little bit of color here I'm going to put on this lip just this one this lower lip I'm going to get a little of my ozo yep. I'm going to come just add the smidgiest smidge of a highlight here Back into my lizard. Maybe. Hint. Just barely at an upper mm. lip. Just the less is more here, Sarah Slay. Sarah, Sarah Slay. Slay. Okay, I'm going to take my Prussian and mix a little burnt sienna into it and grab a little white. I'm going to come down the front of my pipe, and so here at the joint. And some of this chalk will have to be taken out, but I just need to know where this stuff is, right? To even start thinking about taking it out, I'm putting a little highlight over here, and another little one here. And there's certainly one down here. A little bit there. Mm. I want to get right into my burnt and my alizarin. I'm going to start erasing out some of my chalk lines and oh. seeing where I'm at. And you're just doing that with uh, with some just water? Just a little water. So that's not paint. That's just water. This is just water, and I'm just the brush is clean. 
It's just a nice way for me. I, I'm not, if I were painting Liquitex student paints, this might be tough to do because they might not bind completely. And so, you know, I might have to go back and think about it again. I'm going to come here and So there we go. Mm -hmm. Just telling very little there. And I'm going to get into... I'm going to do just as little as I can do around the eyes as I can do. Challenging, but I'm going to see what I got. Mm. So I've got this probably big... I think this is big enough. I like that. It's probably just a challenge but you know there's a little pocket of light right here and I really 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 like the Prussian blue for this because he's got these like really really blue eyes mm -hmm. and so even though it's not a psycho bright color it will feel bright I'm back to the Lizard Crimson, the Yellow Ochre, and a little Burnt. I'm going to come right back here and make sure I haven't lost my eye line. Now here's an interesting thing I can do, and I had it out just in case I needed it. I'm going to get some black on here and just make sure that right here I have not lost the lines I need to have for this to be the piece it is. Right? Because mm. we don't lose it. And I'm going to get a little of my Prussian. I've got my black on here. Now, if you didn't have a filbert... I might even switch down smaller. Now, if you didn't have a filbert, you could use another brush. It just, just might be a little more challenging. anything small that you've got control over at this stage. Okay. Anything teeny tiny that gives you some pretty decent control over what you have going on. I'm looking for uh, a shader. and I'm. A, what are you doing over there? I'm looking for a shader that I want. <laughs> I may get this detail, but I'm looking for a shader. I have a bucket of brushes. All right. From the bucket of brushes. I'm just going to get in here. It All is right. what it is. So, so what, what did you end up picking up? my black and my blue. What did you end up picking up there with brush? This is, it's not numbered, but I believe this is the number zero oh. Archerpa uh, detail. It's an, it's, it's an, it's um, just you're a, just looking for a detail round. Okay. Right here. And I'm going to just make sure that I've got this. It's a number zero detail round. And I'm going to just, this is going to be one of those places that I will put some thought into. So I'm putting in the pupil. You can go ahead and I'm going to get a little alizarin. So there's the black and I'm getting some white. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just add a gray right here in the corner, just barely. I'm going to keep adding a little white to that. just barely and then a little bit here in the back corner but just barely less is more see how I'm just just not really get some black again now this eye is darker than the other eye So even though I'm going to go ahead and put this in, right, I'm going to be darkening this whole eye so much that you're going to only faintly see it. Hmm. Okay. And I think That's the fun cool. is going to be the smoke and the hair mm -hmm. for me. 
but I do want to get a little brightness in here so I'm going to take my Prussian in a little bit of white and just a little bit around here. I'm just dabbing. And there really is just a hint here. So, you know, this is going to be like the thing is like, oh, I've really got to, you know, this is really in shadow right here. And so just trust sometimes things like that. See how I just put that in shadow? And a little alizarin and a little white. So that's a little more red than you might think. And I'm going to put a little bit right here. Mm hmm See? Yeah. We're not saying a lot about what's happening there because it would be crazy to do so at this stage. The more you talk about stuff, the more you have to talk about it, the more you're going to have to add things. And you have to decide very carefully where do you want to focus that attention. Now, get back into my filbert. Yes. Get back into my filbert. I'm going to come in to my brown. And um, the only thing I didn't use was the cad yellow. Because I just didn't really need to warm anything up that much. It would have been too much for this piece. And I'm going to very carefully stain this base for my eyebrows. Just stain that base. You're going to come back with some little wild hairs. So all you're doing, I think there could be a highlight right here. So I'm going to take my Ozo and just put one right there. Soften that one. So we're still good. We're still good. Now, hair and beard. Hair and beard. Let's make sure we have some brown to tame this Prussian. And we're going to just, and this needs to be a lighter value, just on the edge of this. I'm going to paint some, not all, some of what I see happening here with this highlight. Just the edge of my brush. Again, I'm working far back, aren't I? Mm -hmm. That's interesting, you're holding it far back there. Just a little bit of looseness. A little bit of hair. Because while he's very quaffed, there's these weird little bits of him that have, <laughs> have completely exited <laughs> the plan, haven't they? As, as hair does. As hair does, even on, on a well-considered... I mean, you think about this guy. I've thought about this guy a lot. Don't worry, babe. Not in a weird way. <laughs> but just like, what it, what about him, right? What about him? And how do we tell his story? I, I like this coloration you've chosen here. I, I was I was kind of like, I what didn't understand at first. But of course, you know, I, it's real hard for me to ever be able to say anything because I don't have any clue to begin with. So it's sort of like going, okay, purple and yellow. Right. But, like, man, that's turned out really cool. It gives him a jazzy kind of feel. So you're painting who he is. You're painting what you see and what you feel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just what you see and what you feel. And I got to tell you, on my monitor, the nickel is, like, a glowing. Yeah, it is. It is. 
Now on 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 RoboCamera, camera I had I have it dialed uh, down a little bit so that you can see the subtle differences in the blacks and the tones. Yeah, I think RoboCam probably is more accurate today. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just you know, please 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 be careful on the facial hair. You don't want to say too much. And it can get away from you real quick. I'm just on the edge of my brush. This also helps me lighten up. If I had a tendency to kinetically press into my canvas through my shoulder, through the brush, bending the bristles, yeah. there's a lot of people who it, it, it's very hard for them to learn and feel the spring because you don't want to be engaging your brush as much more than this. Right. Right. Unless you're in an active scumble. You don't want to be pressing these things down into the heel. Right. You want to be just bouncing. And so if you have a tendency to overpress or you've been told to overpress or however that happened, right? By backing up your brush, it can help you stop doing that. Cool. It's not the only way to do it. It's just a good way. <laughs> so don't be like smacking people's brushes out of their hands. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> just, just know it's a good, good way, right? But I, I'm, I'm actually watching you. Just It's kind of interesting to see you do that. Because you don't generally hold back that far. I also kind of wanted this to be a portrait people would just want to have. <laughs> it is. I, I think it's pretty neat. Luckily, I, these get to hang around here for a little while and I get to see them. So... I'm just trying to paint as little as I can get away with of of his beard. I'm paying a lot of attention to it's it's lighter here on the outer edge, just so you know. See? Mm hmm Where it's lighter and where it's not. There we go. I'm just looking and finding some like touching. It's it's so funny. It's like it reminds me of little shrimp. They go. Tut, 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 tut. Sorry. So we all have little analogies in our head. That's <laughs> mine today. <laughs> little shrimps. Been fly fishing. <laughs> Saturday is gonna be fun. <laughs> if you like trout. Yep. Living in wild wilderness. You know, and it's uh, it's easy to get caught on that uh, that that questionable treadmill of, am I an artist? Uh, you know? Yeah. And you know, the minute you pick up a brush, you are an artist. The minute you pick up a pencil, a pen, uh, uh, get your fingers dirty and start drawing on the wall, you know, you're validated as a creator. So see, I'm just putting these weird little crazy hairs. He didn't have too many, but he had a few, and you got to say, oh, they <laughs> happen. I like them. <laughs> now, on the smoke, I'm going to come in and get a little... I'm going to keep it in the Prussian blue because it's a cool color. I can warm the smoke with yellow, mm -hmm. which will pull it forward, or I can cool it and have to decide... Sharp of thinking. I think I'm going to go cooler because if I warm it up, man, it can become the whole painting in about two seconds. Hmm. But I, I just want to... Oh, wait. There's oh. something I want to do. Oh, wait. If I'm going to warm it, if I'm going to light it, I need to light it, even though it wasn't lit in the picture. So I'm going to take a little of my alizarin and my quinacridone. Just a bit. You put some, put some. Add some embers in there. Yeah, some heat in the pipe. There's no heat in the pipe. There's no smoke. So sometimes you got to look for stuff like that when you're changing things up. Hmm. And again, I don't have a reference. I'm gonna say as little as I can. Just. Right. Just to imply. I'm gonna imply, and then I'm gonna wander some smoke up just a little bit. Because that makes me happy. Get a highlight.
Have fun. Mm-hmm. Do we feel like we like him? I think so. I like him a Got lot. Got some old man in the sea stuff happening here, doesn't he? <laughs> so I'm going to get my violet that we worked so hard for. The older I get, the less I think he looks old. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean there, babe. <laughs> it's like, hey, hey, you're not so old. <laughs> and I'm going to think about where I'm signing him. Since the hand was important to me, that's where I'm going to be dropping a signature. Because that just plays into the focus that everybody is having. Oh, you know what I did, though? What'd you do? I forgot my highlight. I always forget one thing. So get, I've always... got a dirty brush here. It's got a little of the gray and all the weird colors. It's not a white white. Mm -hmm. You see it's like not a white white. Yeah. I'm going to come here on the eye. Oh, 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 oh. Right here. Hold on, hold on. Now they gotta see. They gotta get in there and see this one. Okay. Just the smallest amount of that. And Don't do a lot show, of it. Show more. You put it on the other eye. I see it, but I want to make sure they see it there. So it went right here. Right. And so these are wet orbs, and they're going to tell you what the lighting is. And this much lighting on somebody, you better believe there'd be a light source in the eye, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really like him. I do too. I think that's great. Okay. So, see, I have a mad genius plan sometimes. You do. So, your only goal for today, I hope you painted along. I hope you were brave. I hope you gave it a go. But when you're looking at your piece, I just want you to reflect back and say, did I learn something about this process that I didn't know before I began this journey? Because as an artist, especially in this fabulous, outstanding learning phase, which my wish for you is that you never feel like you've exited it. Mm -hmm. Because it will keep art fun and indefinitely if you can always be really open-minded and always be in that student phase but i hope you just took one thing away that you didn't know because if you took one thing away that you didn't know you won yeah you won art you did i um, love you guys we had a huge crowd of people we had over 300 people the entire time here love having you guys Thank you so much for all of the questions. Thank you, Gail and Vicky and Robin and Susan and Sheba and Jennifer and Deb and Brenda and all of and, and Mayed and Ruth and all the people who's been here and and guys. Thank you for joining us. It's so lovely to have you here with us. Love you so much. You be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. <laughs>